Welcome to the video on elimination reactions and specifically anti-peri planar conformation required for E2 reaction. I just wanted to revisit the idea of the stereochemistry that's required for an E2 reaction, that anti-peri planar configuration that's required in the substrate before we can do an E2 elimination. And so here on the left is the Newman projection of a compound that is peri planar, but they're on the same side. And so you can imagine that the base coming in from the same side as the leaving group leaving is going to be problematic. Whereas on the right-hand side over here, we have what's called anti-peri planar, where they're in the same plane. Our base can easily pull that proton off at the same time that the leaving group's leaving, of course, while that double bond is being formed. This anti-peri planar allows the elimination to happen. Looking at the sawhorse rather than the Newman projection might also help you see what's happening. When we have the proton that's being pulled off and the leaving group on the same side, it gets crowded on that side with the negatively charged base on the same side as the negatively charged leaving group. And so this doesn't work. However, when they are anti-peri planar, like on the right-hand side, the base is approaching from, let's say, the top and the leaving group is leaving out the bottom. And so this is better. Bottom line, anti-peri planar is required for E2 elimination. Now, most of the time we have bonds that have free rotation. And so it's really not a big deal. However, when we have elimination happening in a ring, this is going to become very important. And the way that we're going to think about cyclic compounds being in anti-peri planar is we pull that cyclohexane into a chair conformation. And I think we can see they're both axial and one goes up and one goes down and they're on the carbon next door. So we can have some base pull this proton off, kicks this into a double bond, and kicks the leaving group out. And so this setup is anti-peri planar, where we have an axial hydrogen next to an axial leaving group. And so what does all this mean in terms of cyclohexane? Let me show you. When we have a flat ring and we see that the chlorine is coming out at us here, in order to be 1,2 diaxial, it's going to have to be trans. So in this case, on carbon number one, this methyl group and this chlorine group and this hydrogen are all going to be either axial or equatorial, depending on the ring flip. And if we put it into the chair, we can see here's the methyl group on carbon one, the chlorine on carbon two, and the hydrogen on carbon three. Remember our cheat sheet here with our cyclohexane where we have axial axial, axial, every other, right? I think you can see that we have trans. If we have the leaving group that's coming out of the plane of the board, then the axial positions are going to be the ones going into the board on the beta carbons. So that's how I think about it. And I hope that helps a little bit. Now, remember at the same time that our big groups want to be equatorial for the most stable chair conformation. Sometimes we're going to have to do a ring flip to get the alkyl halide into an axial position so that it can become anti-peri planar so that we can then do elimination. So if we look at this example, we have the leaving group and the hydrogen both anti-peri planar position, both in axial, and we would get elimination directly from the most stable chair conformation. So with this chair conformation, the isopropyl groups in the equatorial, the chlorines in the equatorial, we're going to have to do a ring flip to get that chlorine into the axial position so we can do elimination. Once we do that, however, I hope you see that this chlorine and this hydrogen could be anti-peri planar, so we could develop the double bond here in our product. However, this isopropyl group has blocked this position, and so we will not be able to form a double bond here. This will not be able to happen. Here's another example of that. Here we have our methyl group and our chlorine, both in the equatorial. We'll do a ring flip to get, to get that chlorine into axial. So here we go. And now this position is blocked because the methyl group is there. However, this position is not. So we can form our double bond there, which is what we get as our product. If we move on, we can, however, do E1 in that situation. Our chlorine can be equatorial and it can leave. So we can have our leaving group in the equatorial to form that carbocation. And so we're able to, by E1 mechanism, form that double bond where we couldn't have an E2 because it would not be able to do the anti-peri planar conformation. There you have it, anti-peri planar for the E2 mechanism of elimination.